Shenzhen Technologies White Tiger. Hey, how's it going? In today's video, we have the White Tiger from Shenzhen Technologies. And yes, this is the same Chinese company that made the White Dragon, a kit that I did review and it's on the channel if you want to check it out. This is the third overall kit they have made, but the second unique one, just because the Azure Dragon and the White Dragon are pretty much the same thing, but a recolor. The kit was released in February of 2023, and it bought it off of Hobby Link Japan for $101 Canadian. On Hobby Link Japan's website, it says this kit is from the Senkai Kyo series. Just reading it off the website, I'm not sure how accurate this is. But anyways, let's start the review. And here we got a digital image of what the model kit looks like. And first thing I notice is the box quality is actually a lot better. At least compared to the White Dragon box. But also like that box, there's pretty much nothing here. Just a bunch of words I can't read with warnings on them. And after having built two of these, the plastic hasn't killed me yet, so I think we're safe. And since there's nothing here, let's take a look at the kit itself. Here's the White Tiger, straight build, no panel lining, and the kit doesn't come with stickers. First thing you might notice is that the kit is actually very beautiful. But it definitely has a lot of issues, and that's mostly revolving around the build. Firstly, these little bits over here are used all around the kit, and all of them are for joints. And their problem is that they are very tight. So I recommend using a hobby knife to scrape the center of the hole just to increase the diameter. And if you watched my White Dragon review, it too had fitment issues with the joints. Though I gotta say, the White Tigers is much easier to correct. Now important note, please listen. When you do scrape it, constantly check the fitment. You don't want it to be overly loose. It ain't pretty, but you're never gonna see the inside of the joint anyways. Now the next major issue I have with this kit is this gray piece here. It's the internals for the base of the neck, attaching to the shoulders. And when applied enough force, the part over here frequently disassembles itself. I'm not sure if it's... Oh, I look like... Oh, I think I broke it. Now, I didn't actually break it, but that's what happens when you apply too much force. And I guess these pieces aren't ABS plastic, because plastic cement does not work. I resort to using some crazy glue, and that gets the job done. And please do not glue the moving parts. You're only gluing these flat pieces over here. The ones I'm pointing at with the tweezers. Do not glue this moving part. Or you're going to have a very stiff neck tiger. And next thing, I do have a small issue. The tail is so tight and because of the design of the tail, putting it together is actually painful. Unlike the other parts, I do not recommend you sanding down anything that relates to the tail. It will make it really loose and you're going to have issues with it. The tail is so long that the stiffness helps with the posing. But because it's so spiky, you actually have to apply a greater amount of force to attach it. And unfortunately, I have no way of improving this process. So uh, yeah, have fun! Though there are fitment issues, the whole design is not all bad. Like the White Dragon, they implemented undergating technology on both the clear orange parts and the white pieces. Meaning you don't have to deal with bad nubs. Though the plastic is a little soft, so watch out when you're cutting it. It doesn't leave any stress marks, but you can take a chunk of plastic out if you're not careful. Also, I forgot to mention that the gold is also undergated, and this kit uses a nice plated gold. Better than Bandai's gold injection plastic. Overall, the kit is somewhat of an easy build, though I don't recommend it for beginners, just because of the fitment issues, which would be a problem if you're inexperienced. But the end result is a pretty dope looking kit. I absolutely love the aggressive design. Looks like a buzzsaw made love with a tiger. There's so much sharp spiky bits on it, it looks like it adds an element of fire or lightning into the design. And I'm all for it. Also helps that the colored parts separation is friggin amazing for these kits. Like the dragons was good, and this is even better. I love how they implemented specific slots for the orange just to come right through. The orange mimicking the striping looks cool. Also surprisingly, the use of gold is very subtle and contrasts really well with the orange and white. Now the only issue I have with the appearance is that there are some grays mostly for the claws and the inside parts of the legs. I feel the claws should have been gold, and then the other parts on the legs should have been white. Though don't get me wrong, it still looks absolutely amazing. And the sculpting for this kit is very beautiful. There's a great amount of surface level detail molded right onto it. But for this one, I don't think panel lining those details would be a good idea. But that's my own personal opinion, you can still do it if you want. I believe it looks absolutely fine being a straight build. With that said, let's see if its articulation is as good as its appearance. And like always, starting with the head, the mouth could open and close this far. Kind of wish it was a little wider. The base of the head could swivel side to side, though you gotta hold on to the neck because it's very stiff. And unfortunately, no up and down motion on the base of the head. As for the neck, only the base of the neck allows any movement. 
And that's the tilt up and down. Coming to the forelimbs, there's no internal or external shoulder rotation, but the forelimb is able to perform a 360. Gotta say, a lot of the pieces are very pointy, so they do catch on my gloves and fall off. The elbow is able to extend this far and bend this much. The paw is also on a hinge unit, allowing it to bend really far back and forth, and it too could perform a 360. As for the paws themselves, unfortunately, they aren't able to move individually, but they are able to move up and down. However, due to the poor engineering, the claws do tend to disassemble themselves. Coming to the body, the lumbar could tilt up and down. As for side to side movement, the middle section of the body has a small range of motion here, as does the lumbar section. Now coming to the rear legs, they have a very small abduction. They could do a full 360. The knee is able to bend this far, and the upper ankle is able to bend this much. The claws on the back legs kind of work similar to the front legs, but have a smaller range of motion. Lastly, we got the really long tail, and they're all attached together with a ball and socket joint, giving it a great amount of flexibility, and because of how tight the ball joints are, it can hold nearly every single position the tail is in. As for articulation, I do find the tiger a little lacking. I found that the neck doesn't allow the kit to actually look forward, and it is unable to hold the head at the highest position, slowly drooping down over time. Limited range of motion in the leg area prevents it from doing a lot of cool cat poses, and not having individual moving claws is such a letdown. The articulation isn't the worst, but it definitely could have been better. And since this kit doesn't really have any extras and accessories, let's move on to the shake test. Yeah, so just because the kit has some really tight joints, this doesn't apply to all of it. But this is after I manhandled it, so I guess it didn't do too bad. But I still wouldn't say it feels as solid as a Bandai kit. It's more comparable to the Hind Master Mall Zoids kits. Especially with all the small parts that tend to fall off when I move it. Now if you're wondering about size, at this angle it might look weird, but it actually stands to 7 inches. From claw to spiky shoulder bit. And when fully stretched out, it's around 20 inches. I know it might not look like it, but it's the camera angle. As for size comparison, here it is next to the Entry Grade Arc 72, Master Grade Arc 72, High and Master Model Liger Zero, Figure I sent an Amplified Metal Garumon, then we got Haro, DK, Dorimon, a box of Primaris Intercessors, a belt, and a thermometer. And here it is for shelf presence next to the White Dragon from the same company. They definitely look very good side by side. Also, in order to actually fit in here, I had to curl up the tail. And despite being a little bulkier than a Liger, it pretty much fills up the same real estate and 100% gives off a really good shelf presence. So it concludes my review of the Shenseng Technologies White Tiger. And what are my final thoughts should you buy it? Despite being a very beautiful kit, it does have its issues. Build quality is kind of everywhere, some parts are way too tight, while many other pieces might just fall off when you move it. There are some pieces I highly recommend you sanding down and gluing, so I don't actually recommend this kit for beginners, and I find the articulation is not where I want it to be. This results in limited posing abilities, which for a kit that looks like this, is such a letdown. Though not all of it is bad, the undergating is really good for limiting nub marks, and the kit is somewhat solid. TLDR, appearance excellent, everything else, meh. So it's pretty much up to you if you want to spend the money on this. But hey, thanks for watching my video, I hope you like it, let me know what you think. Oh yeah, there's also two other recolors that are going to be released, I'm deciding whether or not to get them still. And I'm still wondering why these ones are cheaper than this white-orange one I have. But that's my own problem. Thanks again for watching. Take care. Bye.